Hey everyone and welcome back to episode 8 and the final part of the perfect single player storage. We are hopefully going to be finishing off the series today one way or another whether it takes us an hour or three. Um, we're going to get through all of this today and hopefully we should get everything wrapped up and have a final finished storage system here. So before we get started on the episode I want to give a huge shout out to everybody that was involved in this series whether it be directly or indirectly. There's certain components that were used in all of this that I'd love to give a shout out to. So let's start off with one of the most important components of the system. So I think the first shout out has to go to uh, RafQ, Rapscanny, and Glotz and Boyan uh, for the unloading array. It's a pretty amazing storage tech achievement. They've been working on this since like September uh, of last year and uh, it's pretty pog. It's very fast. You you've seen me test it before. I think it does somewhere like 80 to 100k an hour unloading uh, in real world testing. So it's pretty amazing. And yeah, it's overall just a great achievement. The one you see in front of me actually looks maybe a little bit different to the one that you end up seeing in the world download. Uh, as Glotz is still kind of like f putting some finishing touches on it. For example, this version here will have higher batch sizes. So it'll be a little bit more lag efficient. And they've uh, also gone ahead and added an on off switch for it too. Or a pausing switch, should I say. That's a pretty pog feature that a lot of people were asking for. And I think that's going to be a pretty amazing feature to have. Especially if you're playing on a single player world. I'll leave a link in the description for everyone's channels if anyone's got a streaming or youtube channel um go ahead and check all of them out amazing content from all of them and as always the storage tech discord link will be in the description down below too an extra special shout out to command leo for a couple of the components involved in the system including the uh, shulker box and item splitter as well as the mix item loader which have both come in really handy in the system he's also been super helpful outside of that just with giving me a few tips on certain things and a bit of feedback so i really appreciate all of his help in this too i'd also like to give a very special shout out to both cubic meter and experimental idea for inspiration on this series watching both of their storage tech series really got me inspired for this which is one of the reasons why i did it as a last note i've also left the link for the storage tech discord in the description down below everybody i've already mentioned at this point is all a part of the storage tech discord so if you feel like uh, asking them any questions or just saying thank you you can follow the link down below and the final shout out goes to you guys all in the discord and the youtube comment section everyone who's helped in some way either with some sort of advice or feedback or any of those kind of things i really do appreciate it and without any of the people i've mentioned before and you guys this probably wouldn't have been a series that actually ended up happening so thank you once again and i hope you enjoy the final episode I've had a look at some of the components so far. Hopefully I've uh, gotten some feedback from you guys in the comment section about the previous episode and we can try and figure out from there if there's anything I'm missing or anything I should have added. So before we get started, I want to run through uh, a, bit, a bit of a conversation about MIS that I had, um, that I kind of had a little bit of a thought process on. So I want to run through to another world just to show you something. If you remember from one of the previous episodes, I mentioned a little breakdown of like the items that we were going to be storing and which ones we were not going to be storing. You can kind of see a good breakdown of them here. Some of these items have obviously shifted around since uh, since I made this little board here. One of the things that I did mention in that episode was I was going to use a small amount of MIS for some special items. Uh, some of these items you can see here. These are going to be things that you don't generally have too much of, but are special enough to want to store and not want to kind of shove in a box with all the overflow stuff. So I was going to initially plan on putting all of this in MIS. Now what happened was I started playing with MIS and originally when I said I didn't want to use it, I didn't, the reason I didn't want to use it was because I didn't really like the system itself, I didn't really see the point in using it, but I didn't realise that one of the flaws of the system is that it basically runs off of what can only be considered single hopper speed. Now everything that needs to run through the system has to go through this double chest or you know through this hopper line here, which is going to cause quite a problem because if you have a look at the system that we're using, the system more or less uses uh, 16 or up to 16x hopper speed. So if there's up to 16x, uh, you know, items not being sorted through the initial system that have to run through this system here, we're going to end up having a huge backlog. Now, if you consider that I'm buffering up to three double chests worth of shulker boxes, that's a lot of double chests, you know, <laughs> I was trying to calculate how many double chests, but that's a lot of double chests. And if I have a, a humongous buffer for that many items just to run through MIS here, it's going to seem a little bit illogical and kind of slows the entire system down. So it was a bit of a disappointment, actually. And I just realized this the other day because I was just looking at it and trying to figure it out. And I was like, oh, I've never really used MIS before, so didn't particularly know, you know, the in and out of it myself. So I messaged Boyan really quickly just to confirm. And he was like, yeah, no, you need a huge amount of buffer to chuck all the items in. Then the system can store itself basically pretty slowly. We're going to have to refigure out what's going to happen with these items here. Maybe I'll uh, make a separate storage for them. I had another idea as well, but it seems like it might be a little bit overcomplicated and convoluted. So I might give that one a pass, but I'll, I'll let you know as the episode goes on whether we do or don't go for it. 
So from the last episode, we ran basically most of our tests and a majority of the wiring for the system was pretty much hooked up. The only things left at the time uh, were basically just to sort out the shulker boxes and the unstacked items, which I've already done here. So I just saved us a little bit of camera time trying to run through the whole situation here. So we've got the empty shulker boxes being sent up to a little storage thing there, which I'll run through in a minute. This is the, uh, the extra boxes that come from the uh, mixed items or the uh, overflow boxes, should I say. They get sent up into another stream. And then we also have the shulker boxes, which will be coming out of... Actually, this is the shulker boxes here. This was the unstackables that come out of the system, which are actually being box loaded in here. And then they get shot off into the water stream into another system. So I quickly want to run through two separate box systems here that I've designed. They're very janky little systems, but they basically do what I've intended them to do or what I want them to do. So it was a couple smaller systems which I needed to comprise. And actually, this is all kind of falling apart as I pasted the schematic over. But the system m almost basically works like this. So this system here stays basically locked the entire time besides the single hopper here, uh, which will stay unlocked basically all the time. I can lock this with global locking, but I'm, I'm going to go ahead and give that a miss because it's not important. But ultimately, what the system does is, um, as you can see here, we've got these uh, empty shulker boxes, which I'll chuck basically all of them out from. And the idea here is a uh, smart lock system. So again, not sure. I'm sure something similar has been done before, um, but I just wanted to whack something quick together. So ultimately, all these hoppers will stay unlocked and the storage will cascade down. And as you pop in an item, it will unlock the hopper system long enough that the system, the, the very last chest here can at least pick up the item. And then that way, obviously, as things start getting filled, these chests will start taking priority over what gets picked up. So even if I do something like this... I go ahead and pop one of these in there, it'll unlock the system, but then the next one will be prioritized to the chest above it. This is what we're going to be storing the overflow items into and the unstackables into. This is a fair amount of storage of shulker boxes, so I should be able to keep an eye on something like this. I think you can probably make this a little bit bigger with the system still staying with the same amount, uh, same amount of repeaters and stuff like that. So this was good. But when I had shulker storage, obviously shulkers are going to come a little bit heavier. But, you know, they're a bit thicker and faster. So I needed something a little bit bigger than this. Now, I looked at some box storage systems and some of them were just like complicated to the point where they didn't really mean much to me. Now, the shulker box bulk actually needed a slightly different treatment because it needed to reach a few requirements. Um, so basically how this system works is that this is going to be my accessible double chest in my actual storage area. This is the dropper to um, allow the shulker boxes to be sent over to other things that require it, e.g. the mix box loaders, the bulk storage or the semi, the, the mini bulk, uh, and basically anything else that might require it. Like, oh, and the unstackables would basically require this too. So this is a system that would basically allow them to send items over. Now, we wanted to keep everything relatively locked most of the time. There's a couple unlocked toppers, one at the top, one at the bottom. Uh, both can be locked with global locking, I believe, or one of them can. Now, the idea behind this system was to unlock the system when I'm when this chest is basically not full. That way I can always keep the chest full as long as there's items in the, the cascading buffer up there. So you can see once it's reached its signal shrink back up again, it locks the system off. The other thing is, is you want uh, shulker boxes to get all the way down to the lowest uh, chest, which is that one here. So in order to do that, this system will unlock itself again once the um, once items have been fed into the first hopper. The idea here is that it needed long enough to get to the bottom uh, double chest here, which is what this system here is for. So we just put a slight pulse extender just to hold the pulse long enough to let uh, basically shulker boxes get to the bottom. I tried a few signal strength, this seems to be the best one. Ideally, this system here is basically going to be self-locking and sustaining even when global locking isn't taken into account because with global locking, you know, if, if I lock things with global locking, then it's only going to be unlocked when the storage system is in use. Whereas this needs to be available to me, like, for example, something like this would need to be uh, unlockable when I'm using it myself. I actually spent a little bit of time yesterday trying to get that off pit in already somewhere in the storage area and it actually seemed to work out pretty nice and it's over here now. So we've got the system fit in place here. These shulker boxes are from a test that I ran yesterday. The test came out pretty successful because you've also got the mixed items which uh, come out from the mixed item loader or the, the overflow, should I say. And you've also got the unstackables which are being sent here as well, which is why you saw the, the water lines earlier on. I think this would be a good time to show you the flow of the system a little bit here or the flow of the actual storage system. The floor is yet to be designed, but I think the idea of where the, the, the look of the place is going at the moment looks pretty nice. I'm pretty happy with the actual direction of it. In fact, I might remove the night vision for now, just so you can get a better idea of how lighting and stuff works in this in this place. 
And yeah, so we can see all the halls in here. So I've added in uh, crafting tables. One of the things I always find with my storage halls or with generally with storage halls, same thing that happened with Ambition Craft as well, actually, was that in certain locations, you didn't have the uh, crafting tables available readily. It's just one of those things that is so easy to install somewhere. Yes, it kind of takes away from the design a bit, but it's all good because functionality is ultimately the main thing here. So as we come into the uh, chest halls here, you can see I've tried to configure the look to kind of be functional and to have some design aspect to it. So here we've got the crafting tables readily available again everywhere we go, pretty much down the hall. And we've used these um, acacia logs here as kind of like beams that kind of give the effect that it's holding up the, you know, give some sort of structure to the to the storage wall as well. Kind of one of the things that I like when I see like good designs, I always see things that kind of make sense in terms of like structure and build. So these are kind of one of the things I implemented just to give it a little bit of a nicer look. I haven't really done much with the end here yet, so we'll get to that at some point later on. That'll be finalized in the end design, but I think you can kind of get the idea of the, the, the color scheme and the design that I'm going for at least. So this was a, this is pretty good. It's been taking a little while of just kind of like throwing things around here and there. And yeah, it um, seems to be pretty good and, and going in the right direction. The other thing that was imperative to add was ender chests because I seem to always never have any available where I want them and I end up leaving them everywhere. So I'm going to kind of spam ender chests around the storage wall as much as I can. Now, uh, some of you might remember this little section here that I mentioned maybe in the last episode or the episode before where I was going to say this was going to be where all the unstackables and stuff were. We ran out a little bit of space here, which I'll show you on the other side, which I couldn't um, actually fit in there. So this is kind of like the utility room at this point. It's a little bit cozy and um, still doesn't have everything that I need to, but I'll, I'll figure that out as we go along. So we've got uh, a couple of things here, which is the double chests for um, probably going to keep like armor and stuff around here. This is probably the best use for it. And uh, again, on this side, we've got the essentials. We're like food, ender pearls, totems, and fireworks, and so on. It's a nice little uh, box display from Acacia Chan, which I modified to make significantly cheaper and easier to build, and it still functions exactly the same. And uh, I just thought this would be nice to change it up from the the, the shulker box displays that we've got inside. These aren't going to be as regularly as used, so having them in the floor in this scenario didn't seem too bad. And uh, yeah, it looks pretty cool. And then obviously I can keep all the items stored in here for when I need them. We also got indicators here as well. Just tell me something slow. I guess it's just the extra fancy functionality for just for the fun of it. On the side here, we just got some uh, anvil spam, mainly just because this is the e easiest way to, to, to craft stuff. I've also got this dropper here just to spit me an anvil to replace whenever I need to. I don't generally find myself using anvils all that much, so this is a, a good enough use case for this scenario. If we come back out of that place there and we come through the main entrance to the to the bigger place, so this is a really nice little uh, like hallway or archway that I kind of came up with which I thought was pretty nice the whole thing flows really well I wanted this little archway to be a little bit special just to have like this more obvious design choice here which I think turned out pretty nice maybe I'll have a little play around with it but I think it's looking pretty good for what I was looking for and that kind of flows on into the the main area where we've got the the brewer and the smelter at the top there on the right here I kind of had this wall available where I didn't have too much that I could do so I added this kind of like I don't know what really it could be it almost feels like an art installation at this point it's mainly just uh, something to fill the wall in here, but I feel like it kind of gives this, like, you know, when you look at the room here, it's got this kind of like steampunk techno-ish vibe is kind of what I was going for. And I feel like this just adds a little bit of, uh, of that into it too. So yeah, we've got the brewing system here and uh, yeah, same sort of thing here that I had. I had a little bit of empty space here that felt a little bit, you know, need, like it needed something. So I gone ahead and put, pop that in there instead. And then obviously we've got the brewer, sorry, we've got the smelter room in here which uh, this actually probably will get a little bit of a change up just to match the rest of the place. But I actually kind of really like the the look of the place here. So maybe I'll do a little bit of changing to the um, to the interface because it all is a bit too greeny and kind of hard to differentiate certain things. So maybe I'll make some changes to that. And then as we go through this little archway here, we end up in the little section that I mentioned earlier with the shulker box storage and the overflow and, and whatnot. I feel like this kind of like flows really nicely. It kind of leaves me as an entrance to come in through this way. I can still, if I need like, you know, for convenience sake, I've left this kind of like as an open walkway to come from the storage areas. If I need to go and grab a shulker box, take the, the you know, the less scenic route and come and grab them from here. So I thought that kind of fl flowed really nice. The main issue I had with keeping stuff like this in on this side which is what I ultimately wanted to do was that you didn't really have too much space here if you have a little look if I turn on night vision again you can see here I don't really have too much space in terms of adding this bulk in and it was just a little bit too big to 
to um, add on to this side here. So we've gone ahead and, and left that out. Maybe this room, maybe there's some room here for something to be added later on. So I'll probably leave it blank or close it off until it's needed. But at the moment, I don't think I can use too much here. Now, one of the things I might try and see if I can squeeze in if I'm lucky, and I've got a schematic of it and something we're going to add in soon. One of the last things that I, of functionality that needed to be added into the storage area was going to be the crafter, the five slot crafter. Now, I might, I mentioned to you last time in, in the previous video, I was going to set up the, the modified version of Andrew's crafter in here as well. I may end up not doing that because I can't see myself wanting to craft too much stuff here. I've actually got a secondary plan for where the raid farm is located to make that kind of the industrial crafting area. So maybe I'll do that. Maybe I'll add it to both. But as of right now, I think I'm probably just going to stick to having the five slot crafter that I originally mentioned because that should suffice good enough for just the storage area for now. Okay, so I've gone ahead and added in the crafting system in the location that I wanted it in. Fits in pretty nice and snugly over here as well. The only issue I have with this situation here is I've kind of limited myself a little bit with extension because if we go outside you can see there's a huge amount of space in the chunk loaded area which we're not utilizing. However, my thought process is that I originally thought that the the, the whole system was going to be something like this which was storage at the top and then second level the brewer and the smelter and then the crafting area was going to be second floor and because I've kept everything on the first floor it's okay to have you know, a second floor later on if I need to for extra stuff. I've got loads of ways to expand. I can definitely make some adjustments later on to have access to the extra trunk loaded areas. This area is fitted in well really nicely here. The whole place is coming really well together in my opinion. I think it's looking pretty awesome. We've just got a little bit of extra storage here on the sides for what's going to be stuff like cobblestone and redstone. You know, the usual uh, craftables that, were, that come a bit more frequently. Uh, you can see here I've continued to use the piping area, the piping look for areas that were kind of bland and didn't have much going on. I'll definitely be working a little bit more on design as time goes on. Now, what I've started to do is I needed to add a roof here. So you can see already at the top, we've got some glass. This is uh, the tinted glass, is it called? Yes, the tinted glass. So the reason I've used this is actually for daytime. So if we do a uh, time set uh, and we do a noon, which is usually when the light comes in. Now you can see here, it still looks kind of dark outside. And um, if we didn't have this here, you would start to see the rays come through. Now, you might think that was pretty cool to actually get some nice natural sunlight. I like to keep it pretty dark in here. We're going to use mood lighting to keep everything lit in here. We only want lighting from our own setup here. Again, I'm using the night vision effect here just to give us a better look for now whilst we're doing recording and stuff. But we want to keep the lighting dim and stuff in here. Now, I tried to transition from inside to a roof by using something, uh, something along these lines where I've kind of used the walls to differentiate slightly different blocks in the in between and then transition up to this uh the cyan terracotta up into walls again and then into cyan terracotta and if you come outside actually it kind of gives it a really nice look i'm going to turn off um the shaders again here i kind of like the look of it it gives it like this nice modernish look i think it looks pretty cool I didn't want to like over complicate design in here. Things are going to start getting really jarring to look at if I start making like ceiling designs and floor designs. And I'm still not sure what I'm going to do with the floor here either. So I thought I'd keep the ceiling nice and simple. It looks a lot nicer that way. And uh, I'm actually going to go ahead and change the time back to midnight again because I kind of prefer it that way. So this has actually come through really nicely. Now, the second thing I had to worry about. So here's, a, here's the thing. Originally, I had this set up where so one of the changes i wanted to make to the original to this crafter to the one that i displayed a couple episodes ago was to change the output for the empty boxes from the crafting system so originally i had these going into a separate buffer on the side here but i realized now that it's a part of the entire storage system i should reroute the droppers to spit the items back into the shulk storage and this has kind of been the bane of my existence since the last part of the recording that you just saw and the reason for that is is shulker distribution and you know rerouting all empty shulkers from anywhere in the system like there here the uh the main bulk storage all of that kind of stuff was a huge pain but what was even more painful was rerouting the shulker boxes from storage into everything that needed it and luckily it seems like i might have thought of a you know it wasn't a complicated solution in terms of wiring more the logistical part of it was a bit of a pain in the bum and hopefully I think I should have sorted it. So let's go have a little look at underneath here. I'm actually going to go ahead and uh, clear the night vision effect here because it's getting a little bit bright. And hopefully this comes through. In fact, I can see now it doesn't. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off shaders for this one. So how we're going to be uh, distributing shulker. So we'll go for the first thing, which is going to be 
the actual distribution itself. So we've got just a small clock running over here. We don't want anything too fast to be distributed. This is going to spit uh, items out of the dropper, which is underneath this powdered snow. This is going to be sent through a line. Now we're going to do a priority system where certain things get the priority of boxes first, even though that's not how requesting is going to work. So for example, we've got the six loaders here. They're going to take priorities first. Now I've had to take the output out of the drop of these, uh, these hoppers here uh, for multiple reasons, mainly because if I don't take an output out of this item hopper here and I take it out of this one, for example, it's just going to spam boxes in these hoppers anyway. So it's easier, you know, having a few extra hoppers, uh, shulker boxes and item buffers is fine anyway. So we're taking both of the outputs out of these ones. Anytime we lose one, that will set off the system. What then happens is we follow the line around. If it's not the uh, the the mix loaders that require shulker boxes, the items continue through and it will end up in this line down here. And then this gives an opportunity to the mixed item loader for the unstackables uh, to get the option to get picked up here. This is taken again from this hopper output from this side. And this is where things got a little bit annoying. So now the last thing we want to make sure that, you know, we have a signal output from that's actually keeping uh, the correct amount of shulkers is going to be bulk storage or mini bulk, should I say. And this is going to take the items up here. And you can see this big slime line, which is the request line for it. And uh, this is going to be the output that we take from this hopper here. So obviously we're going to have a double chest worth here. You know, no big deal. It's a, it's enough. So if a few lines happen to break at the same time, we have a load, a load of backup. And we're going to get plenty of shulkers incoming anyway. And this line is requested from breaking the line that's requested from this one here. So instead of making a separate request line, they all basically merge into one long line. So all we're doing is powering this line here. If this gets powered by any of those uh, things not meeting the requirement, then that will start things up. And what we'll do is we'll take a little shot from, we'll take a box from here. Unfortunately, the biggest issue with this is once it starts requesting it, it's going to obviously start dropping off shortcut boxes. Now I've tried to slow things down relatively you know, as much as I can, but you know, it's, you're still going to get a fair amount of shulker boxes. So you can see the boxes have missed the targets that from, from that one. If any does get requested on there, it will just get picked up uh, as the boxes are going through. So no big deal. And uh, you're going to see, hopefully, huh, that is not being picked up. Why is that happening? So as I was doing testing, I've realized I've just made a, a pretty fatal flaw here. Now it has been filled up, but that was from me chucking it in there. Now, originally when I tried this, I threw a shulker box into here and it seemed to have picked it up, picked it up, but it doesn't seem like it's picking it up on the way down. So I think what might just fix it is doing something like that. I'm going to give this a go. Now this, you know, may or may not be the correct fix for it. So let's give it a go. That doesn't seem to, to do the job either. Okay. Let's go ahead and fulfill the request line here again. And let me see if I can think of a, a solution. I already have a solution, but I'm trying to think of one that may not be as um, as janky, if I'm honest. So I've kind of fixed the issue here. Now it's kind of bought on a newer one, but it's not really a big issue. Actually probably works out for the best. Now what we've done here is we're taking the output still from this hopper here, but we've got a couple buffers, which is this dropper and this hopper. Now, again, this time, if I take one out, we should drop signal strength here. This actually kind of works out as a slight benefit now that I think about it, because as the boxes come through, you know that we're going to get a few extra ones. By the time this picks up a signal, it takes a minute for it to turn off. So this should actually be helpful in collecting a few extra boxes in that time too. And this system won't be moving fast enough where it becomes an issue. So now you can see we've, um, we've, we've requested the boxes. It's actually picking it up now. Hopefully it'll pick up enough boxes and uh, we should get more than enough through to pick up to fill up the droppers and the hoppers hopefully because we would we want to watch them slide past it here we go and no which is actually this is probably for for the best but i'm actually going to go ahead and fill this up again just for argument's sake and now what we'll do is we'll have a look at this system here same thing again i'll take out that one uh, as soon as it loses signal strength 15 as long as it's not completely if the hopper's not completely full the request line comes back in one more time and obviously considering none of the other hoppers need boxes at the moment they're all going to completely fly past and head over here but again even if they did it wouldn't be a huge issue the boxes will carry on coming through. So that's now reached for signal trend 15 again. It's not going to pick up any more boxes. So all the boxes are then once again sent back to the storage. Now all we're doing is using the same return line for the shulker boxes outside that, that we use to return from the system. We just rejoin them back onto that same thing and send them back up to shulker storage. It wasn't a huge task. It was just a little bit annoying trying to get all the waterways. And the whole place looks a little bit messy now if you ask me. But luckily 
it's not going to be too big of an issue or any issue at all. I believe the system should work as intended now. And uh, I'll probably run a couple more tests just to make sure things are running okay. But if my logic seems correct, which I think it does, uh, we should be good now. And with the extra pulse extender of the two and a half minutes at the end, even if one is uh, a shulker box is requested right at the end for some reason, there should be plenty of time for the shulker boxes to return to storage again before the area becomes unloaded. Now, speaking of unloaded, I want to get to the, the, the hopefully what will be the final part now, which is chunk loading. So I did some double checking and it turned out that the uh, chunks actually end up in the correct place um, for the portals as well. So I thought it was misaligned, but it turned out it wasn't. Now, what I was still thinking about doing was adding a few more trunk loaders. So I was actually thinking about making, um, so if we look at indicator lamps over here, these indicator lamps are requested, but actually going to be one trunk loader at a time. Now, what I was thinking was potentially not doing it that way and making four trunk loaders equivalent to one indicator. And that way I can have way more trunks loaded if I need to, because these chunks are ultimately going to be empty in the perimeter anyway, right? So they shouldn't be loading anything of use either way. So even if I keep these loaded, it should be fine. So I was thinking about preempting for the future and adding uh, four chunk loaders in these. Uh, how many chunks does that become? That's a nine by nine chunk here, and then nine by nine here, nine by nine there, nine by nine there. It may be a little bit excessive at the moment, and maybe something I should just consider for the future. But you know, I'm still curious about it. Now I've taken a backup of the world now and um, I think I'm going to uh, load in the chunk loaders here, put everything in place and I think we're going to probably start running our final test here. Now for chunk loaders I've um, used uh, one that's pretty durable. I've tested it for uh, like six or seven days non-stop running on tick warp with extreme behaviors on and it all seemed good. And um, it's based off of a di design by Kiaxin and I'll leave his one in the description down below. The only reason I modified mine because... I felt like it could have been made a little bit easier, which it was ultimately. But check out his design. It's pretty awesome. Uh, and it doesn't use any uh, hopper minecart. So it's pretty, pretty cool. And I'll make sure I'll leave that in the description. So I'm going to try and get these loaded up in the center chunks here. I'll need to then go into the nether side and make sure that's all good. The last thing I'm considering here is, should I put the chunk loaders lower to the ground or high in the sky? Now, my thought was high in the sky, to be honest with you, because they kind of stay out of the way of things. And that way I don't need it to be... Um, taking up any space uh, underneath and that leaves me a little bit of space underneath to do things if I need to because I think at the moment the biggest issue is going to be space and I need space at the bottom because I'm kind of running running a little bit shy on space so maybe I'll probably do that I'm probably going to shoot the chunk loaders up in the sky somewhere and uh, this should actually make chunk loading in the nether a little bit easier actually now that I think about it because the Y level you know building the um, chunk loaders on the on the nether roof really high up in the sky should be a little bit less janky because i won't have anything else to deal with at that point so i might just do that build these really high in the sky and then build them really high in the sky in the nether too so after many months of trying testing running through different options checking different components uh, building multiple different things getting hands on multiple people in storage tech i think i finally got it down to the final product that we're all looking for indeed this should hopefully be the entire combination of all of the hard work that's gone through that we've all done through the past month or two months or three months. I've kind of lost track of time on how long this series has been going on for now. So all I can say is that we should hopefully be at the end. And I know it seems like I might have cut from the previous episode into what seems like that could be the last, um, the, the last combination of it. But I think it's time that we run through the extra components that have been added what the testing has been done and we can hopefully try and show you what is hopefully a, you know a relatively finished product now i am going to preface this with relatively and i'll run through a little bit more of that later on some things are going to be have to be made custom to your world for example the chunk loading grid i've checked it a couple of times and i some, somehow seem to manage to not figure out whether i've got the right configuration or not but that's probably something i'm going to have to leave for when i actually get into my survival world Testing for this was mainly to do with whether or not the timings for the pulse extenders and the hopper clocks and stuff are correct. And I think we may have, have got it down, but let's give it a little go together. So the first and most confusing part of this whole this whole system here or the, you know, the chunk loading system was activating the, the individual lights to make sure that we had the right uh, connections here. So the first problem that we had on this was trying to get the entire thing connected without creating too many redstone spaghettis. And I think we've ultimately ended up doing that with this torch tower here. So we've got a quad torch tower that ends up going all the way to the top and is basically being slotted into these uh, these 
slime extensions here. Each one in, is uh, directly indicated into the lamps here and each indicator is basically an indication of each of the individual trunk loaders. This one does include the trunk on the left, this on the trunk on the right, this on the trunk on the bottom left, and this on the trunk on the bottom right. That should give us an accurate representation of all of them running. Now, after basically going through a few spaghetti hoops, we did eventually get to what was the correct wiring to get everything uh, connected up, which we'll have, we'll check out all of that in a second. The next most important thing was to gauge what we were gonna use as a signal for whether or not the chunk loaders are running. Now, before we start the test, I can probably do this manually because in addition to wiring all of that up, I've also wired up the manual button for activating the chunk loaders if I don't need it for anything else. So the button here is now active for chunk loading. So it is an on and off button. You will hopefully see the lights in a second turn on. Doesn't actually take too long, there we go. That was all four uh, chunks loaded depending on you know the location so you probably noticed the uh the lights coming on at the correct times of like kind of cascading left right bottom left bottom right that was actually more of a happy coincidence so that's pretty cool now you saw the lights come on the biggest issue with these lighting system here was to try and figure out what i was going to use as like an indicator to see if the chunk loaders were running now this is the current chunk loading setup uh, you should hopefully see the items uh, pop out again. Like I mentioned, this is kind of like a, a, my own take on Kiaxin's chunk loaders. Again, I'll leave his uh, his ones in the description down below. Pretty solid stuff. The entire chunk loading grid is set up on a singular clock over here. And the clock is either powered or depowered to stop the clock from running. We power both sides of the piston uh, as soon as the power is turned on. So no matter what the state of the clock is in, that's the, that's the side that the clock's going to be stopping on. So whether it's on the left or on the right, that's where they will end. Now, again, the biggest issue was trying to figure out where we were going to take an output from. So what we've done is I am currently taking an output from the item that drops through into the chunk loader. So you can see this is the item here. That's going to get removed. That depowers this comparator over here. And this takes a signal over to the observer. Ultimately, what we're doing is we're pushing an observer output signal into this um, pulse extender. As long as there's a constant flow of an output from that comparator, we know that the pot, the chunk loaders are running. Now, the idea here would be the item's always going to be coming back and forth. If for any reason the item gets lost or the function of the item moving back and forth stops, regardless of whether it's actually in the dropper or not, we'll always get an output from it. That was a, not a complicated thing to figure out, but just something that kind of scratched my head a little bit because originally I just had it as an on-off mechanism and that didn't really work out how I wanted it to. So it was a constant pulse that we needed from all of them. Now I used these pulse extenders here just because I was going to use a standard pulse extender with the redstone dust, but these get used a little bit more often. So it felt like just having a little bit of a lag efficiency by using the comparator based ones made a little bit more sense. The wiring on this is a little bit spaghetti at the moment, but as I mentioned to you earlier, this may not be the exact chunk loading setup for the, the system. The idea was just to check that the chunk loading system worked based on the timings of the, the pulse extender and the hopper clocks, and I think they're okay. So that was hopefully the, what, what felt like the most complicated setup done. Now again, if I want to turn these off manually, um, I can come here and press the button. I, th I don't know if I mentioned on the last episode, the reason why we have the indicator grid here is mainly for, for two reasons, should I say. I was going to say one, but actually has two two specific reasons. Number one is that that's the indicator of when all four trunk loaders are running, which means you can either leave the area or log out. Uh, the second reason for having that uh, the, ch the indicators here is to make sure that the chunk loaders haven't broken, which is why the pulse that we need constantly coming in. If um, Actually, do you know what? I didn't get to show this, so I'll, I'll just skip to a quick um fast forward of of actually showing that actually breaking so once these chunk loaders are back up again i will go ahead and basically stop an item so we're going to go ahead and stop this light here we're going to do that by removing the one concrete block here and hopefully i can speed up really fast and get here and you're going to see that the items the rest of them are all going to stop running this light here will turn off eventually and there we are. That's how we know that chunk load is broken, which means I can go and attend to it myself. Again, I think I've mentioned this before, but if I need more than one chunk loader per quadrant, I can always hook them up to make sure that the signal gets only gets sent when all the chunk loaders are consistently running. It'll still run off of a similar basis, and it's probably something you can figure out yourself. Slight adjustments from some of the, the things I mentioned last time was the hopper alignment or the um, box input for the mix, mix loaders. I ended up just reducing a bunch of the hoppers down. Originally it was just for testing. So I've reduced all of the hoppers down quite significantly. So now we're only got two hoppers per slice on the mix loaders as opposed to the, the seven or eight I had originally on there. 
and everything else seems to be running good. There was also a little bit of an issue with the mixed uh, unstackable loader, which I've also fixed now as well. So that should all be running as intended. Now, again, I can mention I've already done a couple tests on this. And uh, if we have a look here, you can see all the issues have hopefully been sorted as we're all only getting four boxes of items, which is one of the issues I was having before. This is all running as intended now as well. So I think the time has come to run our final test. Are we gonna we're gonna have to have a little look at how things work out? Now the only real way to test this to make sure everything works, unfortunately, we won't be able to watch the system working. The only thing we can do is to input boxes and uh, run a tick warp and hope that when we come back here again, everything runs as it should do and nothing's broken. Everything has been sorted. Nothing's left in containers and so on. So the first thing I'm going to do is de disengage the chunk loading. And once that happens, let's go ahead and grab some boxes here. So we're using the same sample set that we've been using, mostly because it's a good mix of items. And ultimately, this shouldn't make a difference to the performance of how the system works. So we're going ahead here and we're going to take ourselves uh, three boxes. This is a worst case scenario, generally speaking. This should be the most amount of boxes that we ever have stored in the system. Remember here, the fourth uh, chest here is mainly just a buffer to uh, keep us safe just in case we do overflow. And uh, so we'll go ahead and pop these in place. There we go. I'll go ahead and empty those out of my inventory. You can see the buffer amounts only on three. It's just because we're a few boxes short of, um, of sorry, on two, but we're only a few boxes short on three of it being quote unquote completely full. And that should be it. Now, the first thing we want to do is to make sure everything is uh, is in its correct state. So the one, the one of the checks I want to do is to make sure shulker boxes are filled up. So you can see the output from the hopper here is fine. It's obviously picked up quite a few more shulker boxes and it's um, on its way around. We're going to make sure this uh, output up here is fine too. In fact, just for this test here, I'm actually going to clear the night vision on this one. And we're going to go ahead and turn off shader so we can do some proper debugging. And yep, we got all of the output um, sorted from here as well. Final thing to check was to make sure nothing in the mix box loader was broken, which I can pretty much assure it isn't. I had a few issues with this, but all of them were basically my fault. And we can tell from the fact that the comparators are both powered. Um, whilst they both get a sign, they require a signal strength of 15. Those seem to be good too. Everything else is completely fine. Uh, the shulker box storage here is looking good. I haven't really had a look at it to see how many shulker boxes we've ended up with. Uh, but it seems like quite a, a fair amount. Okay, good. We're in a positive amount of shulker boxes. I'm going to go ahead and remove all of these from the inventories as well. The reason for that is because we want to see basically what's happened in the time that we've come back. Just so we've got a clear indicator of it. I'll go ahead and get rid of all the unstackables here as well. I think I've spent a, a fair amount of time on the decoration so far. I believe what I really want to do right now is because this project has taken so long eventually, like over the past couple of weeks or months or whatever it's been, I want to kind of get this started to be built in my single player survival, even if it's going to be step by step. Um, so yeah, we're going to try and do that first. But again, let's go ahead and press the button for the final time or for the first and final time for you. Um, I've done this a few times now and hopefully this will be the last one too. So that's that sorted. And um, I'm not going to let it tick warp just yet. You can see we've got some of the full boxes that's already been identified from the is empty. We should see the chunk loaders come on now. You can see the lights flashing there as well, which means I can go ahead and tick warp for a fair amount of time. And I'm going to go ahead and disconnect from the server. Now, unfortunately, this is where things are a little bit anticlimactic. So what we're going to have to do is we'll jump towards the final part or oh, in about 15 or 20 minutes from now. Hopefully all the boxes by then have been sorted and we should get a good idea of whether this thing works or not. I think it's been a fair amount of time now since I clicked off. So hopefully when I log back into the server, I might need to stop the tick warp from happening. How are we looking? Okay, good. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the tick warp off. It looks like the tick warp had already stopped by itself, which is um, an interesting sign. Seems like I'd left it running long enough that it was good. So we can see indicators are all off, chunk loaders have been turned off, which means all the items have been removed. So it's time for us to start doing our final checks to make sure nothing broke. Now, the only thing I couldn't do when I was originally doing the test was to make sure inventories weren't full. In, in, and by that, I basically mean inventories of like the unloading array, which is going to be the biggest issue. We'll check that out in a second. So firstly, we've got a few full boxes here, which means the um, full return is working fine. Now, what we're going to do is go ahead and go into spectator mode and we're going to do something that's going to be a bit, a bit visually jarring for you as the viewer. We're going to have to go ahead and run an inventory scan. And um, yeah, this you can see here, it's kind of turned into the matrix. 
and the idea here is to make sure that there's nothing left behind in the inventories of the unloading array and as long as that's the case we should be pretty jiggy now uh you're gonna see some inventories already full obviously that's gonna be the case i've kind of already gotten a, like a good idea of what it is that should and shouldn't be full so like i know that that's supposed to be full for example and i know what isn't isn't supposed to have items so as it stands right now it seems like we're looking pretty good having a look at the parts that i would have thought that might have items stuck in it that it's supposed to be an inventory that's full the main ones being these droppers up here or these dispensers they're usually things that end up getting items stuck in them or shulker boxes stuck in them from previous versions at least and these dropper towers here are usually ones that also would get things stuck but as i can see right now it looks like we're looking pretty good one of the main checks that i always like to do on this system here a good idea of whether or not it broke um i have learned this quite a few times from boyan and uh, it's always weird to try and find this double chest here because it's all nicely hidden away is to double check the double chest here and again we've got 26 stackables and three unstackables which is exactly what it's supposed to be the hoppers underneath seem like they all have their items in there too which is fantastic so at an initial glance it seems like all of the inventories are that are supposed to be full are full and all the ones that aren't supposed to have items do not which is fantastic news now you can see nothing's been floating around which means you know generally if there was a the the area was unloaded by the chunk loaders at the wrong time we should see either items floating about or shulker boxes that hadn't been that were trying to get loaded into certain systems but you can see those two red redstone uh, torches here are off both on the left and on the right there that's good so the inventory for those should be full uh, same goes for the output of the mixed loader output for the hopper on the uh, unloading for the shulker boxes on the main storage seems good too and it's time to basically go and have a check on what should be the final few double checks so you've got all of the mixed items that haven't been going into storage which is actually absolutely fantastic you might see a couple items here and there which were supposed to go into storage eg the sugar cane but that's because we've overflowed on storage on there anyway and then we've got all of the unstackables in filled boxes which is fantastic news it means that that should all be running as intended now we have a little look at the system we think no items are left behind in the inventories of the unloading array. Uh, all the unstackables and stackables have seemed to be fine in the corner over there. Nothing is broken so far. I've um, actually, what, when I said to you guys I had run this a few times before, I had. I actually ran this about five or six times before, running it over and over again, putting in the items, leaving the area, so on and so forth, and everything seems to have worked out pretty well. So I'm going to go ahead and say that this is the perfect single player storage but it is of course this perfect single player storage for me i'm gonna put this in the world download in the description down below so you guys can also have the option to build one yourself but i would heavily implore that you go and head go ahead and have a look at the storage tech discord pick out components and find some more storage tech there that you might even prefer for you this may not end up being the perfect solution for everyone in fact i can probably imagine it's not the perfect solution for a lot of people so again check out the storage tech discord ask the people in storage tech they might have some easier solutions more simpler things different versions of the items i've used the box and the box displays for example there may be better box displays available in the storage tech discord and actually they even have a whole bunch of different versions of both brewers and smelter arrays some smelter arrays which are a lot more nicer for a storage area where it uses like no no entities fewer hoppers and is all hopper locked faster brewing systems and so on and so forth so essentially what this series has always been about is building the perfect single player storage for me hopefully you guys have learned a little something from this little journey that we've gone through and i hope that maybe with some of the inspiration from here a lot of inspiration from storage tech and help from a lot of the community there you can probably try and build your perfect single player storage too thanks again for watching i'll see you on the next one Bye bye